And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Last Defense. You have 20 minutes to save the city. This is a cooperative game for families in which aliens and robot spiders and giant tentacles and the blob and spider robots and sentient plants are all attacking and you got to work together to fight them off in 20 minutes. The game is literally 20 minutes. It requires an app that you can download for free and play. Here's how it works. Each person is going to be a different character in the game. The good dog, the soccer champ, the barbecue dad, the on-call nurse, the skateboarder, or the construction worker. You'll take your person. You start in your starting area on the board. And then we're going to use the app. The app is both a timer. It's a free download. It has a how to play video. It explains it. You press a new game. And it asks you if you read the rules, completed steps to set up, and is everyone ready to begin playing? And then you can pick beginner or experience, and you say next. At this point... It starts kind of a pre-recorded thing. Our regular programming to bring you this important news. We have reports around the city of damage caused by unknown monsters. We have people trapped at these locations. The farmer's market. The farmer's market. The factory. The factory. That's us. We're the last defense. And then it asks you, so in each one, you put a scientist and a rubble token. Once you do that, you start the timer. You're going to have to defeat four threats to win. Unknown threats attacking the city. We will keep you informed as we identify these threats and where they are located. In the meantime, please rescue the trapped scientists. We will need their help. And here we go. Alright, so the timer is going off, and while the timer goes off, a player is going to start their turn. On your turn, you roll both dice. You resolve the dice, you pass them to the next player, and then they do them. The green die shows you how many tool cards you draw. The, uh, the other die shows you how far you can move. If you move into a spot with a rubble token, you can reveal that token. And that token shows you what tools you'll need. So this is any three. This shows the bullhorn and a f uh, fire extinguisher. And if you are in the spot and you happen to have the tools that are needed to get rid of that, so maybe I have any three tools, you can put them in a discard pile and you'll get rid of that rubble token. Once you get rid of the rubble token, you will get this scientist token and you'll place that scientist token on top of your character as you're going through. At various points during it, uh, as the app is playing, you can see it's doing a countdown, but at various points the app is going to pause and tell you that monsters are coming on the board. So you can see there are five different monsters there, sentient plants, giant tentacles, junk blobs, space aliens, and spider robots. All of them start off the board, and you're going to be rolling the dice as fast as you can, passing the dice back and forth, moving around, revealing these, and trying to get the scientists. And uh, you can see the white lines show you which direction you can move to but then a monster shows up all right so when these come on the board you can't move through them unless you pay a flare if they have scientists on them they'll steal those scientists also when they show up they start they bring a scientist and a rubble token on them if there's a person there that person's sent back to the rest area where they'll then have to move out to the plaza and go around so they slow you down now to defeat them once they come out you're going to reveal their card and it's going to show you what you need to defeat them so to defeat this one i need an astrophysicist physicist and an engineer so players are going to be trying to rescue those specific scientists. These yellow discs are scientists. There are some helicopters. The helicopter lets you fly anywhere. But once you have the scientists, you can take them back to the plaza. Once you have the proper ones, you'll be able to put them on that card and then show that that card's been defeated. But wait! Ball. 
So this is going to keep happening. If you leave them on the board, they're going to it. They're going to keep. They'll move from one spot to another. But once you beat one, you'll just go here, and I'll say I'll beat the giant robot. Did I, am I sure that we beat it? Yes. It cheers, and it will no longer move that one around. And then once you defeat it, all of them, it will tell you you've won the game. And if time gets to zero, you've all lost. That's basically it. There's a few rules about passing cards back to each other. You can only have so many cards in your hand at the end of a turn, but that's how you play. The game needs an app, but the app is bright, colorful, cheerful, and very easy to work with. I had no problem. I really like the characters. These are nice cardboard tokens, but they're also really easy to distinguish. Their color is clear. They're a good swath of different types of people um, that, I don't know, I just like it. One of them's a dog. And then you got these miniatures. They're not great miniatures, but they're good enough for what this game needs. Having the monsters be cardboard standards works fine. The cards are okay quality, and I... I uh, kind of wish they were bigger because they're going to get shuffled and gone through a lot. But that's pretty much it. Dice good quality. For what you get, a good production value. If you're worried about the whole fact that there's giant aliens and things, this game is not scary at all. Look how brightly colored this is. The whole game has that. The bright colors of the game, the silliness of it. Nothing ever bad happens other than your time has run out. That's it. And the game is not a very hefty one. It's roll dice, move, grab the resources you need, go to the right spot, spend them. But it's really fast and it's very frenetic. In fact, I thought it worked pretty well. It's two to six, two players back and forth. And, but you have to run to more spots and stop more stuff. With six players, there's more people, and six might even be too many. I might want to stop this at four or five. But, you know, you're passing this around. You, you go less often, but you're still cheering for other people. You're like, oh, you have the two things you need. You need to go over here. Oh, no. And then the aliens show up or whatever, and it's, it's entertaining. It is not a game that's a deep game by any means, but it's fun. Uh, there's a game I really like called Escape. Escape! And it's very similar, but I would say it's more of an adult version. You roll dice, you're trying to get out of the Temple of Doom. This has that same feeling, but it's simpler. And this is the kind of game that it is in mass markets that I hope people are having a fantastic time playing. Uh, just because of how silly and quick and fun it is. Uh, there's five different creatures. Four of them will show up in any given game. The It's not an easy game. It's easy to play, but it's not necessarily easy to beat. I, I have not lost on the easy setting, but we came awfully close. And you just, it's just, again, it's just speed, fast, but everyone's working together, which makes me like these more. And it's fun with your kids. You have a chance to stop the aliens or whatever they are, and it's just entertaining for the whole family. I like games like this. I think they're fun. Cooperative games work great with families. Bright, cheerful, save the planet from weird aliens. That's just icing on the cake. Dice Tower Judgment, approved!